Welcome to the show. Chris Graham here. It's a rainy Sunday. And um, uh, at least it's, I don't know, my part of Virginia, it's not raining so much as it is threatening rain. Uh, maybe even some snow tonight, which I don't want to think, think about. But we're going to talk on this rainy Sunday a couple of topics about UVA basketball, uh, both about UVA offense, which is interesting, right? Usually we talk about defense with UVA basketball. Uh, the, the Who's are in the middle of their exam break. Uh, won't be back in action until next Saturday uh, with Northeastern coming to town. And um, so it gives, this is one of those times where you kind of recalibrate when you're a writer anyway. I'm, the team's probably recalibrating too, uh, uh, you know, dealing with uh, any of the nagging injuries that have been out there, uh, you know, whatever the case may be with this time off, in addition to the final exams I got to take. And uh, from the writing standpoint, it you know, gives me an opportunity uh, to, to – it's kind of like a bye week in football, you know? You just kind of look at where things are and, and you know, try to analyze some things. And um, I, I stumbled into a couple of interesting topics when I was going through the analytics. Uh, the first one uh, about the offense is is one that uh, you don't really think much about. I mean, I'll, I'll talk with people, even fellow media people on press row at games – and uh, is often said, hey, why doesn't Tony run more? Uh, and I always have the answer, Tony doesn't run more because he doesn't run more. That's just what you know Tony does or doesn't do. He's running more the last couple of games. Uh, since that ugly 65-41 loss to Wisconsin back before Thanksgiving, and actually the equally ugly 56-54 win over West Virginia down in South Florida to, to finish that trip, um, they had a week off in between the West Virginia game and the Texas A&M game in the ACC SEC challenge. And Tony made some tweaks to the offense. Now one, one tweak was, uh, you, you know, not running exclusively mover blocker of the signs offense where essentially the, uh, whoever's got the ball dribbling waits for guys to run off screens and then all that, all, everything comes off those screens, but um, mixing, mixing mover blocker sides with uh, some more triangle offense uh, where the the three guards on the floor actually are the key guys in the triangle, not the traditional triple post offense that you saw from Tex Winters and Phil Jackson, in the uh, the Chicago Bulls back in the the nineties, um, where there'd be a big in the middle. Um, I'm thinking Tony Kukoc, or uh, he was maybe the best at it, uh, a passing big. Uh, who then has a couple of guards on either side, and you, you create a triangle with those three and make it hard for the defense to, to guard. Uh, the triangle that Tony is using a lot this year uh, it involves those guards, and they're not necessarily a post guy, but they're, they're, they're screening and backdoor cuts among the guards. We saw some of this last year from the offense, and then uh, it worked the best when Ben Vanderplas was was healthy, and when he uh, started having the issues with his back and that, you know, caused his offensive numbers to decline, uh, the offense became stagnant because teams didn't have to respect the outside shooting of, of Vanderplas. And um, uh, Tony went back to mover blocker sides, which, you know, it's funny how, you know, when you change things up, sometimes even even those things that people are familiar with can be effective because they haven't seen it lately. They don't have tape on it and that kind of thing. Anyway, I say all that to say that's that's one part of this. The other part, again, I'm going back to what I started with, is the transition offense. Um, and I'll say in the last two games, Virginia had 25 points in transition in the win over North Carolina Central and 15 in transition in the 84-62 win over Syracuse, uh, those games last week. 40 points in two games. Uh, the previous seven games, Virginia had 36 transition points total, five points a game. And so... Uh, and when I looked at some of, so I looked at the season numbers on Synergy Sports, a subscription site that I love to pour through, especially times like this when there's not a lot going on. Virginia is among the top in the top third of teams in the country in offensive efficiency in transition, uh, averaging 1.118 points per possession. Now the Virginia is only in transition on 11 percent of possessions, but that's actually a higher number than than last year. Eight percent of positions uh, of possessions for Virginia were in transition, so slight tick uptick, and in the last two games a big uptick. Um, you know, if I did the the math on that uh, the, uh, in my head here, I didn't do this in the story, but uh, let's see. So the twenty six possessions for Virginia. I do know this. This is in the story. Twenty six possessions in the last two games in transition for Virginia, out of one hundred and twenty eight total possessions. 
That's roughly uh, almost 20%. In fact, it's a little bit more than 20%. 26 out of 130 will be 20%. So there's a slightly like 20.4, 20.5% of possessions in transition. That's, <laughs> this is Tony running wild, <laughs> you know, and I put in context, uh, Gonzaga, when I looked at their, their year over year numbers for last year, 33% roughly of their possessions were transition possessions last year. So, you know, 20, 20% for Virginia is not, you know, is not, running them down the court like Gonzaga does, but it's, it's great. It's, it's a big difference from the 8% that Virginia averaged last year. And, you know, on those 26 possessions, Virginia scoring 40 points. Uh, when you look that up, when you do the math on that, that's 1.538 points per possession on um, those transition possession possessions. So uh, that's, that's tremendous. And on the season, you know, with the lower numbers, because of the lower number of possessions and transition, Virginia is shooting 51.9%. Uh, on transition possessions and effective uh, field goal rate of 58.3%. That includes free throws and, and three pointers, the value of three pointers uh, in the effective field goal rate. So uh, obviously if you run more, you know, when you, if you can get your offense into position to get a good shot, either in the lane at the rim uh, or a trailer or a guy in a corner for a three, the other team hasn't had a chance to set his defense up yet. So you're going to have better shots. If, you know, if you're taking good shots, if you're not just rushing things. Um, and so that's why, you know, teams typically score, you know, at, at a higher rate in transition. And that's the way the, the Virginia's whole system under Tony Bennett's designed to stop other teams from having those easy baskets. And that's why, you know, you see Bennett loathe to go uh, have his team in transition too much because uh, the more you're in transition, the more opportunities you can create for other teams to have transition possessions. You know, a, a live ball turnover in transition. We just all I got to do is bring up the Syracuse game from the 2016 Elite Eight uh, as an example of 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 what we're talking about there. You speed up the game, and and sometimes teams, in a, certainly in a one game situation, can take advantage of that. Uh, a few minutes situation can take advantage of that, and so Tony prefers to have a slower pace, not just because he likes slower pace. It's because it helps the defense. You know, if, if his, his theory has always been, and it goes back to his father, if, if we can play uh half court versus half court, we will win most of those games. If we, if, if you play 60 possessions against our half court defense, you're not going to score a lot of points. Uh, Virginia this year, uh, if, you know, top five, top six in the country in defensive efficiency, uh, according to Ken Palm, bears that out. Um, and so, uh, but, you, you know, with the athleticism on his team, this is something that uh, Lawrence Johnson, friend of mine, uh, sports writer, sports sports um, influencer down in the uh, southeastern part of the state, Tidewater part of the state, talked about before the season started, there's so many athletes on this team this year. It's different. The, the level of athleticism on this Virginia team is maybe even better than that 2018-2019 team that won a national championship. You've got guys like Reese Beekman and Ryan Dunn, two projected first-round picks in the upcoming NBA draft. Uh, you've got Isaac McNeely uh, banging in threes. McNeely is six of nine in transition on threes this year. Uh, that's an astounding percent. Five of those threes are in the last two games. Uh, give him open looks, and that's the best open look you're going to get is when you're in transition. If you're wide open on three on a three, yeah, uh, an open look is the best kind of look, right? Uh, Dante Harris, when he's healthy, can push the tempo. Now we're seeing Elijah Gertrude, who's emerged in the last three games since Harris went down. The the the, the very athletic, true freshman combo guard. I say combo guard. He's he's going to be a point guard if he wants to, uh, as as his career rolls on at UVA. And you've got so many guys out there. Leon Bond is another one that comes to mind. Uh, uh, I like Andrew Rohde. He's he's a little bit more of your uh, half court offensive guru, but he he's a, a, a gifted passer at six six, can knock the three down. So this team has athleticism that that you know maybe no previous Virginia teams had, and so you know why not run more? That was that was the thinking that Lawrence and I were were working on before the season even started, and now you know after seven games, Tony's taking the leash off. Here's the quote. Um, from Tony after the North Carolina Central game. Some games we talked about having a green light if it's a rhythm push transition three. Some guys have a yellow light. Some guys have a bright red light. That means don't shoot a transition three. But of course, if you can get ahead and get to the lane and have a good layup, or if obviously we force a turnover along rebound, take advantage of it. Yeah. 
what you know all you have to do is is think back uh if i'm sure you're a virginia fan if you're watching or listening to, to me talk here about this just think back to some of the throwdowns from from ryan dunn and uh elijah gertrude uh on fast break opportunities uh these guys can finish at the rim they can finish at the rim in half court but they can really finish uh against a scrambling defense in transition so a lot of points in transition for this virginia team and what i've noticed so i you know wanted to look at all angles of this you know one reason i mentioned earlier tony bennett does not like uh, as much to run he likes to run in controlled situations uh he doesn't like to run uh, you know he's 20 percent of possessions right now the last two games is because he doesn't want the other team to be able to get out and run when you look at the overall number of possessions per game the last two games, they're basically the same. So it's not like with all this running that Virginia is doing, they're giving up anything on the defensive end to have to be able to do that. That's that's going to be key for for Virginia with Tony Bennett. He's going to want to make sure, all right, we'll run and, and we'll we'll convert. And if they're scoring 1.5 points per possession when they're doing that, he's going to, he's going to want to run 20% of the time, but we're going to want to get back on defense and we're going to want to still keep the game under control. Uh, so uh, and 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 this is all about. I'll give another quote from Tony on this, and then we'll we'll go to our other offense topic. Talking a lot of offense here on the on the show today. Uh, Any way we can get points when we're not scoring, we don't pound it inside and have post guys to go to work. We use more cuts in the post. Some of our smaller guys are a little more effective on the low post or even off the lane. We call that the playmaker spot. And so obviously you get guys in there and then have some action going while the action going while the ball's in their hands. This is where you, you comes up the 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 play of Leon Bond the third. Now, Leon Bond III is not getting a lot of run in the big games yet. Uh, when I say big games, the Power Five games, but in in he's he's showing in the games against the next level uh, uh, conference opponents down, they can put points on the board. He had 14 points uh, in the game uh, with North Carolina Central, six of eight shooting, nine rebounds. And when you look at him on cuts this year, he's nine of 13 shooting uh, on jumpers, short jumpers off cuts. That's 69.2%. He's a guy that doesn't have a three-point range, so he's not going to be somebody in mover blocker at 6'5 that can do anything for you when he catches the ball on the perimeter. In fact, I mean, guys are going to sag off him. He's he's not made a three. That, excuse me. He has made a three, banked a three in in that NC Central game. So I have to correct myself. He banked a three in in that NC Central game. He's not a three-point shooter. Not yet. I'm sure he'll develop that uh, as his career comes on at Virginia. But he's got a great mid-range jump shot. Uh, he's got hops so he can get up in the air on that jump shot and, and create space for himself. And so he's not going to be the the guy that necessarily does a lot for you as a guard and mover blocker. And he's a, he plays guard. He's a little undersized to be setting the screens and mover blocker, but man, you get him in that triangle and, and let him create. He's, he's, he's really good at running off screens. He's really good off those cuts. And uh, he talked about this after the game with, with North Carolina central. I love it. I just like coming off the screens. I just want to down. I just want to down screen to shoot a mid range fade in jumper. That's all I want, really. So when we run that, that's all I'm looking for. And if it gets other guys open and everything, I mean, it's really hard to guard. And it gets other guys open and everything, and I mean, it's really hard to guard. You switch it, we slip it. You stay, and somebody's gonna be wide open. That's the, the choice that Virginia is making guys make uh, when uh, they they run that triangle offense. And he's really good at that. Uh, you got Reese Beekman, who is proven to you know to be really good at that as well. Uh, uh, and I like, I mean, you know, Andrew Rohde slipping under there. You know, last year, Virginia ran a lot of those sets. Armand Franklin was really good at setting the screen uh, and then and then posting up at 6'4". And Tony Bennett talked about, you know, the importance of being able uh, to have a guard. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter who scores in the post. If you have a guard that can score in the post, he's got, you know, got the, the footwork. he got the skill to be able to shoot, uh, you know, little shots there in the post, get the, the close-in shots. That's it, it doesn't matter who scores it as long as someone's scoring it. And um uh, and so uh that's it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. Now, obviously the opposition uh increases in intensity uh when we come back from the break. Northeastern is is sort of a a, a warm-up game. No, if you know, don't walk past Northeastern, but then you get into Memphis, then you get uh more into the ACC schedule after. But uh you're seeing Virginia run more and you're seeing this Virginia team. Uh, with some wrinkles on the offensive side. Now, the 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 next bit, uh, and the other bit, I should say, of the, uh, of the of this podcast discussion about Virginia offense, Virginia basketball offense. Here, we'll talk about the lineup and uh, something I noticed here. Uh, I headlined the story I wrote the other day. 
Uh, Tony Bennett is sacrificing defense for offense? Question mark. What question mark? <laughs> Um, I ran some numbers with the help of the website evanmaya.com, which is a really, really good resource. Uh, it's a subscription-based uh, uh, website. Well, there's there's a free part of it too, but uh, the, the subscription part I paid for gives you some really in-depth lineup analysis. You can analyze everything from two-player combinations all the way up to five-man lineups. I really like to do the five-man lineup thing um, and see the the impact of of you know the five-man groupings and how they play offensively, how they play defensively. And I was pouring through the numbers again. It's we're in the exam break uh, weeds here. <laughs> and um, Tony's most frequent five man lineup has become Reese Beekman, Andrew Rohde, Isaac McNeely in the backcourt. I know Ryan Dunn is listed as a guard, but he he would be your your four uh, in this alignment. And then Jake Groves at the five. Um and uh, that lineup, the most frequent lineup that Tony's been using of late, in fact, he, he's used it twice as much as his next most frequent lineup, uh, averages 1.348 points per possession on the offensive end. It's a really good number. Uh, Virginia is averaging right around 1.111 points per possession uh, overall this season when you factor everything in for the whole season. So that that group is uh, is is well beyond that. That's a that's close to 20% better than the average overall for, for Virginia on the season. Now, the second most frequent lineup, and you'll see a reason why the numbers come down, it's Beekman, Rody McNeely in the backcourt, done at four, Blake Buchanan at five. Now, that group averages 1.032 points per possession. So 1.348, 1.032. What's the difference there? It's, it's 0.316 points per possession. Now I'm really... Now I'm making your head spin. If you're not a math person, it's okay. Um, I'll try to make it mean more to you. Um, the the lineup on the floor that I talked about, the the one with Groves, because that's the only difference, Groves or Buchanan. Uh, if the other four are are consistent, and then it's either Groves or Buchanan. Um, the lineup, the, the one with Groves on the floor, is on the floor for about 20 possessions per game. Um, on those 20 possessions, thus, if you're getting 0. 0.316 points per possession more, it's about six points. I mean, it's 6.3 points. Uh, in, in the course of one game, it's six points more. Over the course of the season, you know, there's there's obviously a, a huge, huge difference there um, with Groves being on the floor in the place of Buchanan. So I'll tell you that, and then I'll tell you that the there's a flip side to this. <laughs> The lineup with Buchanan has been its best by far defensively. It allows 0.629 points per possession. 0.629. Now, the group with Groves on the floor averages allows 0.928. That's still a really good number. Virginia on the season is averaging, uh, giving up right around 0.907, I think it is. I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but it's point. it's around that area. So 0.928, I mean, that, if that was your number for the, all 40 minutes of a game, you, I mean, Virginia's fifth or sixth in the country right now in Ken's mom, you'd still be 15 or 20 in the country out of 363 teams. That that, that grouping that scores all those points per possession, you know, is, is still a really good defensive group, but the group with Buchanan is next level good. I mean, it's maybe even two next levels good <laughs> defensively. Um. And so I'll go back and, you know, give you a sense. The difference on that is 0.299 points per possession better that the Buchanan group is. And over the course of 20 possessions, it's 5.98 points. It's six points. I mean, now, you know, there there is a slight adjustment, 0.34 points per possession uh, in favor of the, the, the overall, if you compare the offense group versus the defense group and everything you know, so 0.34 points possession now in the course of an individual game minuscule over the course of a season you know uh you're if you average 60 possessions a game let's just do the easy math times 30 games that's 1800 possessions i mean point point three four points per possession 1800 possessions that or that's going to add up right so um and you're talking 600 points roughly uh difference uh Per game, so our our per season, I should say. So um, Bennett is obviously there's somebody on that staff <laughs> that is in charge of metrics because you, you look at this and and right now you say there's a reason that Tony Bennett is using the Groves lineup. You know, I mean, obviously there's he's got a feel and a, a feel for the flow of everything too. He's, he's got to decide that the group with Groves, which doesn't rebound as well, 
um, all, in addition to the defense, is is more valuable offensively. Um, but you know, the big reason here is he's he's basically saying for for so many years, and, and some Virginia fans who love the level of success, they love that banner hanging up there, would say, "But why don't we get more offense out of this team? We got all these guys." Um, Tony is is evolving in his old age, and I say that he's three years older than me, so he's not old. Um, his hair's gray. Mine would be if I left it grow. That's I'm vain enough not to let it grow. That's why it's not there. <laughs> I just shave it off because I don't like the gray. But um, and as, as Tony is evolving as a coach, he's evolving more into an offensive minded coach. Now I'm you know again, <laughs> he's not giving up the back line. He's not going to go running like Gonzaga, uh, but. Yeah, he's 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 making tweaks in favor of the offense being uh, a, a little more valuable uh, in his mind. I, you know, I don't know that. I don't know that. You know, it's only been five years. I don't know that Jack Salt starts for a national championship team uh, under a you know a current Tony Bennett you know coaching regime. I don't know that a guy like maybe Isaiah Wilkins, who's an assistant coach on the staff, will be getting as many minutes uh, on in a, under Tony Bennett in December of twenty twenty three. I think he's, you know, you're seeing Tony say, I want more offense on the floor. I want my offense. I want my guys to be able to play defense too, but I, I, I'll i I'll err on the side of, you know, guys who can play, you know, good defense, uh, above average defense, uh, but also, you know, can be more valuable on the offensive side. So it's, it's interesting. I, I don't know that, you know, I I write these things. I talk about these things because I don't know that, you, you know, everybody sees quite everything. We're at a stage in the season where there have been a couple of games that you probably watched uh closely on tv we're not in the heart of the acc yet kind of giving you a, i'm trying to give you a sense at least of of you know what you're going to start seeing when you know more days like this happen uh and you have to be hunkered down and uh, you are watching the games more closely you're going to see you know i think you'll see it you'll see a, there's going to be a little bit of a difference to this virginia team when you start paying closer attention to it i think I think you'll see less of the games in the 50s and more of the games in the 60s and 70s out of this Virginia side, and I think you'll see some more wins as well. Hey, if you've got any questions for me, any topics for me to address, anything for the mailbag, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, current UVA basketball, uh, past, distant past. I'll, I'll, I'll either have an opinion or look something up or have some facts or whatever the case may be. Please email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.